All right, this is Bill from Lilac Writer, back with another group of new features in Persona Studio One version 1.5 that came out yesterday. And there's a lot to cover. I did a basic introduction yesterday, and we got a few more cool things today. Um, first thing we're going to look at is this uh, little question mark here. That opens up the what's called the info view for uh, Studio One, and this also debuts in 1.5. And as you can see, as I hover the cursor over different parts of the um, edit area, it gives me basically a kind of tool tips on what I can do uh, with different keyboard modifiers. So for instance, I can do a, um, if I'm in an aud over an audio field, I can do a slip edit. I didn't even uh, realize I could do this. I'm not sure if that's a new feature or not. But anyway, a slip edit works like this. I'll um, call up the uh, cutting tool. And we'll just put a cut here and here on this track. So a slip edit, let me zoom in a little bit. You actually move the audio inside of the range. And so... What it says here is slip edit. I hold down option and control, and then I can drag the audio. And you can see that um, it's not quite lined up with the beat. So I can adjust that um, right here with the slip edit. So for instance, holding down command on the Mac, that would be control on the PC, gives me the range tool. It's just a great new feature that really it makes it a lot easier what you can do in any particular mode. There's a lot of keyboard commands to learn in most of these programs, and anything like this that we can get to help when you're learning is great. Now, the next thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about the plugin bypass. Um, a lot of the plugins now have a bypass, so I'm going to go into the, uh, the larger mixer view here, and you'll see I put a Pro EQ on uh, my master channel. And it says uh, bypass here, and you'll see how this works. So basically, I've created a sort of a kill switch effect here. And the way I did this um, is I went into the Pro EQ and I found in the miscellaneous a uh, telephone preset. So I just dragged that in, and now I've got that in there. And I, I can close, uh, well, let's just audition this a little bit. So I can drag this around to tweak the effect, but I'm really going after a kind of a lo-fi effect. Really useful in all kinds of music. And the bypass is available here as well. All right, I'm gonna close the main plugin and we'll go to the expanded view here. All right, so I'm going to right-click right on this button to set an automation lane for editing the automation. So it says Edit Bypass Automation. And what this does, if I go back to the um, main arrange view, is it, let me just stop that a second, is it sets up an automation lane for my, uh, my master output. So I'm going to say this is my master kill switch. And by doing that from the right click on that parameter, I've already got the automation uh, lane here and the um, envelope all set up and it's on. So that's engaged. I'll shrink that down a little bit. But I don't want that playing all the time. It's just an effect. So I just grab that automation envelope and, and uh, dragged it to the top. Let me get this loop set a little bit better. All right, so I want to go to that lo-fi effect on my whole track when I hit this section here and maybe do that for maybe um, one bar. So the way I can do that is in the new, there's a whole bunch of uh, new automation curves. Before you would just draw them in by hand, but now we've got a nice, selection of really cool things we can do with actually drawing 
various curves and shapes in on the automation. I'm going to grab to square because what I want to do is when I hit this section is just is just do one bar. Uh, I've got quantize set to one. Let me just set that. It'll snap based on your your snap settings. But anyway, I've already I've got that in now. See, now I've got a one bar of uh, kill switch function. If I want another one, then I can just go here and draw in another one. I really like this square tool for doing this sort of thing. It really, if I say I set this to eighth notes, I can create a chopping effect. And if I wanted a lot more of that, then I can just select this stuff and do a control copy and then wherever I want it I can uh, then paste this shape in pretty cool so now let's just hear a little bit of that it, the uh, lo-fi now if you did this on volume uh, you'd get a, a gating effect alright so that's kind of one of the uh, reasons that the bypass is really cool. That's just the beginning because you can turn on and off any effect. But the most obvious thing is to do that with, with an EQ to do a kill switch effect. You could also map that to one of your uh, controllers. Again, we're going to cover the drag and drop because I think this is uh, just so cool. It's always been difficult to create your own uh, sample libraries. And there's a few features in here that just really make this a, a lot easier than it's than it's been and easier than it's than it is in pretty much any other software. So I've got a superior drummer track here. All right, so say I've got this set up and I've created a kind of a cool mix. Uh, now all I need to do is click or uh, right click on the region and under the part functions, I'll just do a bounce instrument part. And now just like that, I've got I've got this thing as a wave file. So I just just like that mixed that little piece of superior drummer into a wave file. And now I'm going to go over into the file section. All right, so here's my loop folder. We now have basic folder operations. We can create new folders. We can um, rename folders and delete folders right from inside the browser. Um, an obvious function is missing in most other programs, but it makes it very easy if you're trying to create your own loop set. So now I can just drag these out as been, has been pointed out before. So now just like that, I've got a, a loop. I can audition over here or drag into other songs. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is go over um, video, call up the video screen. So from the video player, I can add a video here and uh, browse it, or I can just drag one in from the desktop, which is what I'm going to do here, and just drop it on this video uh, preview screen. And so um, then if, if I rewind the project and play it, then you'll get the... Um, the video I've got my other material going here in the background this is muted all right so um, now this is an element in my project just like anything else there's also a very handy extract audio feature and if I hit this it will take the audio from the video um, to a new track <laughs> And so now I've got that in the tr in the uh, project, and if I click into it later, the video will just follow along. So this is great if you're trying to cue something. Um, now, if you edit this video and and cut it up, it's not going to stay in sync. At least I don't think it will stay in sync. And uh, yes, that was me doing the Viennese waltz, and we'll see you again next time.